Okay, let, let's get to the point. What about the switch knife they found in the old man's chest? Uh, wait, wait a minute. There's some people who haven't talked to you. Shouldn't we go in order? They'll get a chance to talk to us. Be quiet a second, will you? What about it? This, the knife this fine, upright boy admitted buying the night of the killing. Let's talk about it. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get it in here and look at it. I'd like to see it again, Mr. Foreman. We all saw what it looks like. Why do we have to see it again? The gentleman has a right to see exhibits and evidence. Say, could you bring us the knife? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. The knife and the way it was bought is pretty strong evidence, don't you think? I do. Good. Now, suppose we take these facts one at a time. One. The boy admitted going out of the house at 8 o'clock on the night of the murder after being slapped several times by his father. No, no, no. No, he didn't say slapped. He said punched. There's a difference between a slap and a punch. After being hit several times by his father. Two, he went directly to a neighborhood junk shop where he bought one of those... Uh, switch knives. Switchblade knives. This wasn't what you'd call an ordinary knife. It had a very unusual carved handle and blade. The storekeeper who sold it to him said it was the only one of its kind he had ever had in stock. Three... He met some friends of his in front of a tavern about 8.45. Am I right so far? Yes, you are. You bet he is. He talked with his friends for about an hour, leaving them at 9.45. During this time, they saw the switch knife. Four. They identified the death weapon in court as that very same knife. Five. He arrived home at about 10 o'clock. Now, this is where the stories offered by the uh, state and the boy begin to diverge slightly. He claims that he went to a movie at about 11.30, returning home at 3.10 to find his father dead and himself arrested. He also claims that the two detectives arrested him and threw him down a half a flight of stairs. Now, what happened to the switch knife? He claims that it fell through a hole in his pocket on the way to the movie sometime between 11.30 and uh, 3.10, and that he never saw it again. Now, there is a tale, gentlemen. I think it's quite clear that the boy never went to the movies that night. No one in the house saw him go out at 11.30. No one at the theater identified him. He couldn't even remember the names of the pictures he saw. What actually happened is this. The boy stayed home, had another fight with his father, stabbed him to death, and left the house at 10 minutes after 12. He even remembered to wipe the knife clean of fingerprints. Now, are you trying to tell me that this knife really fell through a hole in the boy's pocket. Someone picked it up off the street, went to the boy's house, and stabbed his father with it just to test its sharpness? No, I'm just saying it's possible the boy lost his knife and that somebody else stabbed his father with a similar knife. It's just possible. Take a look at this knife. It's a very unusual knife. I've never seen one like it. Neither had the storekeeper who sold it to the boy. Aren't you asking us to accept a pretty incredible coincidence? I'm just saying a coincidence is possible. And I say it's not possible. Where did that come from? It's the same night. Where did you get it? I went out walking for a couple of hours last night. I walked through the boys' neighborhood. I bought that in a little pawn shop just two blocks from the boys' house. It cost six dollars. It's against the law to buy or sell switchblade knives. That's right, I broke the law. Listen, you pulled a real bright trick. Now, suppose you tell me what it proves. Maybe there are ten knives like that, so what? Maybe there are. Well, what does it mean? You found another knife like it. What's that, the discovery of the age or something? You mean you're asking us to believe that somebody else did the stabbing with exactly the same kind of knife? The odds are a million to one. It's possible, but not very probable. Okay, fellas, let's take our seats. There's no point standing around all over the place. You know, it's interesting that he'd find a knife exactly like the one the boy bought. What's interesting about it? Interesting. Well, I don't know. I just thought it was interesting. There are still 11 of us here who think he's guilty. Right. What do you think you're going to accomplish? You're not going to change anybody's mind. So if you want to be stubborn and hang this jury, go ahead. The kid will be tried again and found guilty as sure as he's born. Probably right. <laughs> 